I decided to go on and, and talk about what is the second derivative tell us. And if we get some of the basics out of the way, then we can start exploring some of the more intricacies of the first and second derivative test and apply them to graphing. All right, so what's the second derivative tell us? Well, the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. So let me give you an example. Um, y equals to x squared. Everybody knows this function, right? So it's the, the basic parabola graph. Goes like this. And it looks like it's decreasing on the left, increasing on the right. Okay. And so the first derivative is uh, 2x. And indeed, when that's supposed to hit at the origin here, when x is negative, if you plug in a negative number, then the derivative is negative. So over here, the first derivative is negative, which, which tells us that it should be decreasing. And it is. As you move left to right, it's falling. And then if you plug in a positive number for x, we, we, we get a positive. 2 times x is positive. So over here, we expect the, uh, the first derivative is positive. We expect it to be rising. And indeed it does. The derivative does this. Now down here is where it kind of turns the corner at the vertex. And in fact, if you set this equal to zero, x will be zero. And so it does, it does turn there. Okay, now then, the, um, but when you think about these little tangent lines, you know, as, as you move with the derivative, you know, this tangent line is kind of steep, here it's not so steep, here it's getting shallower, shallower. Right down here, it's flat. The derivative is zero. And now it's increasing the slopes are increasing, it's getting steeper and steeper. So it starts steeper over here and flattens out briefly and then starts to increase and gets steeper and steeper. So what's going on there? Well you think about this, the, um, you know, think of the derivative as the slope of the tangent line, then the slopes are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually they reach zero and then they start increasing, going faster and faster. And so the slopes are going from large negative numbers to large positive numbers. <laughs> In other words, it's always increasing. The slope is always increasing. And so when the slope is always increasing, that means its rate of change has to be positive. That's the second derivative. So the rate of change of the first derivative is the second derivative. And if the second derivative is always positive, that means those tangents are, are increasing, the slope values are increasing. <laughs> right. Well, that describes upward concavity. And so we say that this shape here is um, concave up. We call that concave up. And it happens when, when the derivative is positive. Positive derivative goes concave up. And in fact, here's what happens if I take the second derivative, derivative of 2x is 2. Well, that's constant, but it's constantly 2 is always positive, isn't it? So, so we, because the second derivative is, is a positive, always, everywhere, then we expect it to, the graph to be concave up. And then, um, and now, you know, flipping around, this would be called concave down concave down. And this is when the first second, uh, and I have a mistake here. This should be second derivative. Please fix that in your notes when the second derivative is positive. And it's concave down when the second derivative is negative. There we go. So um, positive or negative tells, talks, you know, describes the concavity of a graph. Now what happens when um, the second derivative is, is equal to zero? And um, well, eh, I don't have a graph to show you on, on this example. This example doesn't show that, but, but uh, it turns out that's called the point of inflection. So let me, let me briefly uh, draw you a graph. I'll show you the point of inflection. Well, I thought I would go back to uh, y equal x cubed minus 9x. We, we talked about this in the previous video. And uh, let's, let's look at second derivative. Now, 
we first have to get the first derivative. This derivative is 3x squared minus 9. And then the second derivative is going to be 6x plus 0, so just 6x. And the second derivative is going to be positive whenever 6 times x is positive. In other words, when x is positive. When x is greater than 0. And in fact, when x is greater than 0, look what we have. We have the concave up shape. Concave up. And then um, likewise, it's going to be negative when x is negative. So second derivative, negative when x is less than 0. So it has the concave down shape on this side of the graph. Um, isn't that wonderful? Well, well, that concavity changes right there at this point. And this point, which is going to be the origin uh, on this graph, is called the point of inflection. And the point of inflection is where the second derivative is zero. All right, and, and, and guess where? And guess what? If we set this equal to zero, x equals zero. That's the point of inflection. So now I'll, I'll tell you that the concavity, um, I don't think it has to change at a point of inflection. It may not change, um, but it usually does. For most functions, it does. So there are some, there are some exceptions to things. But, um, but here's, here's a nice thing, which I'm, I'm going to talk again in a different video, but I'll just point out real quickly that uh, up here, where the, the first derivative was 0, the second derivative was negative, concave down. And over here, when the first derivative was equal to 0, but the second derivative was positive, we reached a minimum. So we have a maximum, concave down. Here we have a minimum, concave up. So, very nice, very nice. So, um, all right, well, there's, there's more to it than this, and there's some little details we have to attend to, some little exceptions to, to rules. And, um, but, um, for example, sometimes when the first root of equals zero, we, don't, we still can't tell without looking at a graph or, or doing some other work whether we have a, a, a maximum or a minimum. So we'll have to uh, talk about things like this. Okay, so just um, an, a uh, kind of overview of the basics of the second derivative, what it tells us, and um, is there, what about the third derivative, what does it tell us? Well, I've only seen it mentioned in one textbook, and uh, they call the point where the third derivative equal to zero, they call it the jerk. And so apparently if you were uh, driving along this function, they would, the, the car would jerk the most at the jerk point. Okay. Well, I got to tell you, with experience, I, I I can't even look at a graph and tell you tell you good with any good reliability where the jerk is. <laughs> okay, you can kind of guess where it is, and uh, honestly, I don't think it's very important. So I'm not going to cover the the jerk point in these videos. But I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, I know there's one textbook that, that that brings it up, but really doesn't do much with it. So I would say um, you know the the big ones are the first and second derivatives. Okay, well uh, we'll uh, explore a little more depth here. Uh, after this video.